11. Absolutely Weird But Awesome Martial Arts Movies The Asian martial arts movies are known for their extremely fast-paced action and butter-paper-thin plot. But who cares about the plot when you get to see those unbelievable fight scenes? Having said that, there are some kung fu movies that mix genres like sci-fi, horror, fantasy, comedy, and even romance to create a unique blend of art that's not digestible for mainstream audiences. And you need to be a B-movie lover with a few loose screws in the head to enjoy it, just like us. Today's video is a compilation of some absolutely absurd martial arts movies that will make you go, what, in every few minutes. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Future Cops, 1993. Future Cops is a movie adaptation of the popular video game series, Street Fighter. The game characters have different names like General, Toyota, and Kent, instead of M. Bison, E. Honda, and Kent. But the overall appearance and skills typical to the characters are remarkably similar in the game and movie. The story is set in the near future, 2043, when M. Bison, played by Ken Lo, has been sentenced to prison for his lifetime. But just before this, he manages to send his henchmen back to 1993 to see that his future capture is averted. But that's not all. Three cops from the future, Tai Man, Guile, and Dal Sim, also travel to the year 1993 to make sure Bison's plans are not fulfilled. If you're not stumped enough, listen to this one. Even Super Mario makes a cameo appearance in this movie. Also, amidst all the crazy time travel and a determined plan of action, you find the future cops reusing their past life to engage some romantic high school mischiefs. The future cops doesn't take itself too seriously, but rest assured, you will have great fun watching this one. The Crippled Masters, 1979. As long as we're talking about weird stuff, we cannot miss out on The Crippled Masters, directed by Ki La. On the one hand, protagonists are displaying heroic martial arts, and on the other hand, real-life disabled actors play those characters. If this arrangement feels weird and amiss, three cheers for this hell of a movie. The plot involves a deprived peasant, Li Ho, played by Frankie Shum, and his wicked warlord, Lin Chang Cho, played by Ling Chung Chin. Due to the minor misbehavior on the part of Li Ho, Lin Chang gets extremely angry at him and finally ends up cutting both his arms off in the presence of another torturer, Tang, who is played by Jackie Khan. Later, it so happens that even Tang manages to anger his master, and pretty soon, Lin Chang is seen pouring acid on Tang's legs. Both Li Ho and Tang are then disposed of in the wilderness to fend for themselves. You must be wondering already what to make of such a master. And that is precisely why you should watch this weird movie. The plot follows the tryst of these two unfortunate fighters who first meet up as loudmouthed enemies, but gradually join their imaginary hands and legs to come together as a team. They're on their way to becoming a Voltron-like martial artist, with Li Ho always carrying Tang with him like an extension of his own body. Together, they will become the Crippled Masters. <laughs> The Story of Ricky, 1991. The Story of Ricky is a shocking movie for different reasons. Whether it's the outrageous depiction of blood and gore or over the top storyline itself, this is undeniably a unique creation back from the 1990s. Rick O is a martial artist with superhuman power and fighting abilities. He confronts a crime lord who had been responsible for his girlfriend's death, and in the ensuing brawl, ends up murdering him. As a result of this, he is sentenced to prison. When the other prison inmates see this newcomer, they have already decided to mess with him in the back of their minds. This gives Ricky opportunities to slaughter these mindless jerks who cannot accept the fact that he cannot be beaten. Of course, Ricky O is more than obliged to carry out his rampage. The gory and grotesque depictions of the fate of Ricky O's opponents will tell you why this movie deserves to be on this list. 
In another instance of brutality and insanity, a prison guard transforms into a Hulk-like monster in the middle of a fight, but in the end, ends up in a giant meat grinder. We need not say more if you haven't watched it. Go get it. Get some Yakuza ass! Yeah. Oh. Beverly Hills Ninja 1997. A wandering clan of ninja warriors finds a baby after what seems like a shipwreck. They decide to take him along with them to their village. The American boy named Haru, and played by Chris Farley, grows up under their care and even starts to understand instructions in ninjutsu. But even though he grows up to be a youngster familiar with their customs and daily life, he cannot fully assimilate himself into the native culture and, most importantly, nor is he able to become a proper ninja. With an overweight physique, he remains intent on becoming a great warrior. In short, Haru achieves everything required to bring embarrassment to his clan. Yet, Haru has a kind of lovable nature. And when a beautiful blonde from California approaches him for help, he immediately becomes ready to serve the demands of this rare occasion. The occasion will pose a challenging situation for Haru, who is already too unfortunate to fail once again. We're wondering whether to call this charmingly absurd or absurdly charming. Ninja Hunter, 1987. A powerful monk who is also a martial artist is known to be doing strange things with women. He justifies his actions by saying that he is merely working on his fighting skills. Meet Abbot White, the wicked priest from Wu Tang with long white hair. Once he wanted to showcase his fighting skills and challenged a student from Shaolin to attempt face-to-face -face combat with him. The fate of the fight is hugely disappointing to Abbott, as he is easily defeated. Unable to compose himself out of the embarrassment, he decides to have the poor Shaolin and his monks killed. He collaborates with some deadly ninjas and almost succeeds in wiping out most of the Shaolin monks, while the rest go into hiding at some refuge. The remaining children of the monks team up and agree to avenge their parents' killings. The plot does not have any layers of storyline and is pretty simple and straightforward. It is a tale of revenge and redemption that portrays many instances of martial arts and fighting scenes. To understand the weird elements here, keep looking out for the activities of Abbott White, whose character is filled with absurdity and excellence at the same time. <laughs> Swordsman 2, 1992. Disclaimer, if you've not seen the first part, you don't need to bother. Swordsman 2 can be enjoyed and watched anyway. The movie is a loose adaptation from Louis Cha's novel, The Smiling Proud Wanderer, that depicts martial artists' adventures and is considered one of the best Uchiha movies. But Swordsman 2 also follows a romantic quest that ends up blending with the action with ridiculous consequences. The story is about an adventurous, action-filled quest to acquire the sacred volume. A wandering martial artist, played by Jet Li, and his companion have to face an evil gender-bending conspirator, Dong Fang Bubai. The plot covers all kinds of weird consequences that their head-on encounter results in. Some sword fight scenes are so fast-paced at times that even Goku would get shy. Directed by Sui Tang Chin, who is popular for movies like A Chinese Ghost Story, this movie is often considered one of the best introductions to the underrated Uxia genre's pure craziness. <laughs> Robo Vampire, 1988. Quite unbelievably, Tom Wilde, an agent from the narcotics department, is given a second chance at coming alive after being shot at point-blank range. But this redemption comes at the cost of being a human. In what seems like a futuristic experiment, Tom finds himself coming back to the living world as an android robot. And not just that, he's given an important mission, to rescue an incredibly beautiful undercover agent Sophie from the depths of the Golden Triangle. To make things difficult and, of course, more amusing, there is the evil warlord Mr. Young and his inhuman conception, the Vampire Beast. The film is a glorious example of what happens when you blend a martial arts epic with just the unbalanced amount of sci-fi and horror. But that's not just what it blends. You also get to see freaky monsters hopping around like loony characters. 
If you thought disparate genres could not be collectively made into a wholesome experience, watch this legend way back from the 1980s and you will not be disappointed at all. This movie is made from a shoestring budget, so set expectations low. What we can guarantee here is the massive amounts of B-movie cheese that will keep you chuckling until the end. God of Cookery, 1996. Talking of weird ass movies also being awesome, no one can ever miss out on God of Cookery. This is a martial arts parody set in a highly competitive world of Hong Kong cuisine. A popular celebrity chef has to end up in rags after being exposed as a fraud by a group of enemies. All this while, he'd been putting up a show, pretending that he was skilled in his job. The truth, however, is that he knew nothing about cooking. Running a lavish business empire, he's even called the god of cookery by award shows that invite him to be a judge. When he's no longer what he deceivingly used to be, he has to live life on the streets. During one of his wandering sprees, he chances upon a street vendor named Turkey, who seems to be in a sort of fix. The movie follows his self-reflective journey of learning what humility and truthfulness are. He slowly realizes things about himself and becomes determined to stand up for himself. On his way to regaining the former title of the God of Cookery, he even learns some crazy Shaolin cooking moves that will make you rub your eyes. With plenty of well-positioned humor and fantastic acting throughout the movie, this movie is a treat to watch. Master of the Flying Guillotine, 1976. Before talking about the Master, let us talk about the Flying Guillotine. It refers to an assassin's deadly weapon that looks like a hat, but has a sharp bladed rim attached to an extended chain. If it envelopes someone's head, the result would be a brutal decapitation. The one-armed boxer in the movie has arrived at a martial arts tournament, and he is extremely cautious and alert. Meanwhile, the assassin is waiting to identify him. Here is a movie that expands more on its imaginative capacity than on its visual effects. Since the boxer knows that he cannot confront the deadly assassin by himself in any way, he strategically implants a plan of misdirection. The plot follows this action adventure until the heroic and mindful one-armed boxer joins the assassin in one contesting battle and defeats him. The Crippled Curse, 1986. The Crippled Curse delivers on different weird and awesome fronts. A combination of kung fu, comedy, horror gore, tribal rituals, shooting, sexploitation, and absurd action, this movie is about the consequences of witnessing something you're not supposed to see at all. The plot concerns a daring archaeologist wandering in the jungles of Thailand and accidentally witnesses some sort of ritual being carried out in secrecy. He realizes that this ritual is a sacrificial ceremony belonging where a young girl was going to be sacrificed. As heroic as he is, he takes it upon himself to rescue the beautiful, innocent girl and fails miserably. Owing to this grave offense by an outsider, the Worm Tribe strikes him with the Seven Bloody Curses, which causes blood boils on the body. The plot thus follows his quest to reverse the deadly spell. The spell could be reversed if he obeys and performs certain actions, which include swinging around and playing Spider-Man in real life when attacked by angry monks, grappling a skeleton with the name Old Ancestor that seems to know karate. This movie is going to have a weird, profound effect on you once you finish watching it. Cyber Ninja, 1988. As evident from the title, Cyber Ninja is about a mysterious cyborg ninja called Shiranui. The movie pictures a futuristic world in medieval Japan, where a battle between humans and cyborgs has been raging for quite some time. There is a wicked warlord who controls a mechanical ninja army of his own. Shiranui works as an aide to this army. Battling them is a group of skilled swordsmen ready to defeat this torturous army and avenge their lost brother. As the war ensues, a lot of suffering and loss is portrayed. While the surviving army is marching towards the enemy castle, it is revealed that Shiranui, the robot, is the one they've been looking for. With his new robotic avatar, Shiranui wants to get back his human body and live like a normal human person. 
To put an end to this turmoil, the possible resolution is to rescue the princess from the castle before the resisting army fires a super cannon. With ample depictions of sword fights, bizarre costumes, and striking characters, lasers, this one will give you some fantastic entertainment. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.